All right, so in this video, I'll be going over how you can implement controller input with Pygame. Before we get started, I need to go over the code that I already have here. It's just a basic game loop with a window initialize and a event system for closing the window. And then I also did one extra thing here where I have a square with colors and motion. The square is rendered here with the color based on the index of the color selected. So this is zero, so it'll use this color. If it's one, it'll use this color. And then right here, the motion is applied to the square's position. So if this were set to one, it would move to the right on the X axis, 10 pixels every frame. So this is just here so I can demonstrate the controller input when I actually get the data. So let's get started. To use controllers in Pygame, first you're gonna have to initialize the joystick module. So pygame.joystick.init. And then you have to initialize all the joysticks themselves. What this does here is it goes through the count of the joysticks that Pygame sees, and then it initializes them with that index. The controller IDs are based on the indexes. I'm pretty sure it's just the order that they're loaded in your operating system. So you could pass it zero to initialize your first controller, or one to do second. In this case, I'm just iterating through all of them and initializing them, and just creating a list out of them with some list comprehension. So this joysticks variable just contains a list of all of our joystick objects. You can interface with the controllers through those objects, but the event system is probably more convenient for that. The Pygame event system has event types for the joysticks, which I'll be implementing here. So there's quite a few, but I'm going to implement just some of them right now and show you what the data looks like. So if event.type is joy button down, print event. And then if event.type is joy button up, print event. If event.type is joy uh, axis motion, print event. If event.type is joy hat motion, print event. All right, so this is just processing a bunch of the event types for controller input and printing out their data, essentially. The event is actually an object, but when you print it out, it's formatted in a way we can see what data there is associated with it. So let's run this and take a look. So first of all, you're going to be wanting to look at my console output down here. It's just what's coming from the present statements. If I press down on the A button, you can see I get some data here. It's an event object with some information. And the important thing to notice here is if I press A and B, the button number changes here. If I press X and Y, you'll see the buttons change again. If I press the top button, bumper buttons, it'll change again. I can also press the start and back. Um, there's also the triggers, which come up as these. So one important thing to note here is that the, all the things up here are actually buttons. And then there's the, uh, the other type of input called an axis, which is used for both the joysticks and the triggers it's meant to show a gradient from like zero to one or negative one to one. Triggers use it because they can actually detect how far down you press them. And then joysticks also use it, which I'm, I'm turning right now, to determine the orientation of the joystick. The joysticks move on two axes though. It moves horizontally and vertically. So each joystick is made up of two axes and data. As you can see, there's different axis IDs depending on which one I'm messing around with. So my left joystick is zero and one. It goes, it sets the zeroth axis to one if I go all the way to the right. And it sets it to negative one if I go all the way to the left. Hold on, there we go. And then my axis number one goes all the way to one when I pull it down and it goes to negative one when I pull the, the joystick up. One important thing to note here is that with all these different IDs, like the button ID and the axis ID, these are not consistent among different controllers. My controller is very similar to the Xbox controllers in layout and like the way it's processed. This data is passed as just a bunch of values at different indexes based on how many buttons or axes you have. And the main way people actually deal with different types of controllers for their games is 
just with a database of the layouts of a ton of different controllers. Uh, normally this is handled on like the engine or framework level, although Pygame does not provide a database for that, and actually some engines are criticized or praised based on the quality of their database for their controllers. I think I've actually heard in the past, I don't know if this is currently the case, that Unity is pretty bad about it sometimes. Although it might be just relative to other stuff, who knows? I've just seen a lot of people complaining about it. Anyways, those databases, I, don't, I haven't been able to find one. You can actually look up a, a few different layouts online. If you do some research, you can find just a couple popular ones. So like the Xbox 360, the DualShocks, um, and then some of the USB controllers. And obviously I have my own controller so I can uh, test the one I have. And I'm pretty sure you could probably find like the uh, Switch Pro controller as well. Uh, I've also read that the layout can potentially depend on drivers, which adds more variants that's a bit annoying to deal with. So my recommendation is that if you're trying to implement this in your game, you should probably build up a database of the different layouts for just a couple of the popular controllers. And after that, uh, assume a default, which I would recommend using the Xbox 360 layout, which is essentially what I have since a lot of the USB controllers, the, the cheap ones, will be fairly close to that. Normally, you can count on at least the left joystick and the A, B, X, Y to be consistent. The left joystick is normally the zeroth and the first axis, and then the A, B, X, Y, or whatever they're called, those but four buttons on the right are normally buttons zero through three. But anything past that, you're just gonna have to take a guess. And my recommendation would be that you have a menu so that your users can bind whatever inputs they want. You just store which index they used for some kind of control say you ask them to press the button they want for jump and you see a button let's say i press this one you see it's button one you save that number and you look for that button in the future to determine if the player jumps and that's how i've implemented it in my past games it's kind of a mess but that's about as best as you can do anyways so i'm going to implement some stuff here to actually have something to mess around with so you can see it Oh, also one more thing. There's also the hat, which you can see here. Sometimes the hat comes up as buttons and sometimes it'll come up as a hat. The hat is the, um, well, sometimes four directional, sometimes eight directional, and sometimes five directional apparently as I read, meaning that it has four directions plus a center button. But anyways, normally it's a four directional pad. And I guess in my case, you could consider eight directional. It's usually on the left side of your controller. And that comes up a bit differently, and that comes up under the Joy Hat Motion event. But yeah, I wouldn't count on it actually coming up as a hat, because sometimes it could come up as button numbers, I think, and just come up under four buttons instead of one hat. And you can see the, the values are tuples there with the two values. So in my case, I actually do have, well, you could consider it nine directions, because it, it knows the center. It always falls back to zero, zero when you're done. Anyways, so let's implement some stuff here. So if event.button is zero, and remember zero is my A button. We saw it in the data that was printed out. My square color equals my square color plus one percent the length of colors. This just loops this uh, my square color value, which is an integer that represents an index of the colors that's used to select the color that's rendered here. It'll just loop it through however big this list is. So that's just so I can switch the colors when I press a button. And now let's implement some movement. So that goes under joy axis motion. So if event.axis is less than two, so this is just the first two axes. Remember, zero and one are the axes used for my left joystick. The zeroth axis is horizontal and the first axis is vertical. So fortunately that lines up the same way this list for my motion is used. So I can assign it very directly and just go my, uh, I can just go motion event dot axis. So that's zero or one because we limited it with this if statement and then equals event dot value which is the negative one to the one. And fortunately, the directions of these axes are the same as they are in the game. So that just gets applied here to do movement. So this is just essentially setting the velocity based on the orientation of the joystick. 
So here's what this looks like. You've got moving around and you can change the colors with the A button. And if you notice, well, you can't tell because you can't see my hands, but I'm, my hands are off the controller right now and it's drifting around. That's because the values do not go exactly to zero or exactly to one or exactly to negative one. A lot of times it's imprecise and it'll just kind of sit around there, especially with zero. But anyways, you can move fast, you can move slow. If I tilt the joystick just slightly and that's that. So this little drifting thing is easily fixed with the concept of dead zones. So the idea behind dead zones is that for certain ranges, you essentially just ignore the data. So one option in my case would be to scale, say the range of 0.3 to 0.7, all the way up to zero to one, so that anything below 0.3 is considered zero and anything above 0.7 is considered one. You could do that with some multiplication. Alternatively, you can do dead zones a little bit differently with if statements. And if you want your movement speed to be constant, you can just go, um, well, let's say we can do this, like if event.value is more than 0 0.3, then you know that you've tilted at least a decent amount to the right or, or down, because this is two axes. Anyways, so we're not doing that though. In my case, I'm just going to deal with the case of the zero is not going all the way to zero. So I'm going to do here is go if absolute of motion zero. And the reason I'm using absolute is because it goes from negative one to one. It can be close to zero on the high end or in, on the negative side. So I'm going to do if the absolute is less than 0 0.1 motion zero equals zero. So that just forces it to go to zero if it's close enough. And we're going to do the same thing for the Y axis by switching the zeros to ones. So now, if I take my finger off the joystick, it stays still because it rounds it down to zero if, if the value is less than 0 0.1. You can mess with those de dead zones as you desire um, to do whatever you want for your game. Anyways, there's one last thing I'd like to mention. Well, two more things actually. So first of all, if you're interested in the different types of events or you're interested with interacting with the joystick objects directly, you can check out the documentation. And also um, you can do joysticks.getName to print out the name of, well, I'm gonna print it out, to get the string of the name of the joystick, which you can use to build a database of the different layouts. That's how you can tell what kind of joystick it is. Um, so I'm going to do for joystick in joysticks. And when I run it, you can see that my controller's name is X input controller number one. I've actually got a switch on the back of my controller that allows me to switch between X input or I think direct input. Um, and I can switch it and I get the actual name of the controller, which is uh, Logitech Dual Action. One annoying thing about this though is that um, the controller layout comes up differently depending on which mode I use. So in this case, the X button on the left is now button zero. So I normally use the direct X layout because of that. Anyways, the one last major thing I want to show you was hot plugging where you can unplug and plug the controller back in during the game's runtime. If you notice, I initialize the joysticks up here. So if someone plugs in a joystick after that, then it won't be handled. So this is something you can actually only do in Pi Game 2. And for those of you who don't, uh, don't know, Pygame 2 is just kind of um, a newer version of Pygame. It has some new functionality. It's built on SDL2 instead of SDL. But for the time being, if you want Pygame 2, you have to use um, certain arguments when you install Pygame. You can look that up. By default, Pygame installs are not Pygame 2. They're Pygame 1.9 point something. In the future, the default might be 2. Who knows? Most of you guys watching, at least when this video comes out, will probably not have Pygame 2. So this functionality may not work for you. Um, it's, it's also worth noting that upgrading to Pygame 2 doesn't really cost you anything. It actually makes the games run significantly faster. And also, everything's backwards compatible. So everything should work almost the exact same. Pygame 1.9 games should work for perfectly fine in Pygame 2, if anything better because of the performance boosts. Anyway, so if event.type is joy device added, this is the event that fires when Pygame 
or Pygame 2 sees that a joystick has been added. So when that happens, I'm just going to reinitialize all my joysticks and I'll add an event for removing them as well. Event that type is joy device removed, uh, removed. And I'm going to be doing the exact same thing again. And the reason for this is that you want to update your list with uh, the joysticks whenever you unplug a controller so you don't have like a dead controller listed in there. I'm going to add this part here as well so we can see whatever joystick gets added. So with that, I should be able to turn my controller on and off, like unplug it and plug it back in while the game is running and it should still work. So I'm going to leave the console here so you can see that. So controller works fine. Turn it off. Oh, the remove event didn't fire. Oh, no, it did fire. There's just no message for it. And you can see that the X input controller one came back and I can move around again. Now, if I pull the switch on the back, I'm actually not sure if this is going to work. I haven't tried it. Oh, it, yep. It switched to the dual action instead of the X input. So it, it acts like it's a different controller, even though it's just one controller switching its mode. But that works. I can switch between the different input modes. Right now, I'm pressing X to switch. But if I switch back to the other mode, it's... Um, a, so I can switch back and forth. Dual action, X input, dual action, X input. But yeah, I can un unplug it and plug it back in as well, and that works. So that's pretty much everything for this tutorial. I know it was pretty long. There's, there was a lot to go over here. There's a lot of technical details with dealing with controllers. And just in general, the whole situation for PC games with controllers is kind of a mess. With consoles, it's uh, less complicated because they have one controller type or at least a, a couple when you know what those are. With PC games, you've got to deal with hundreds of different types of controllers, and it's all a mess. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that video was helpful, and I'll see you guys later.